And now on Showbiz India, I'd like to give a very warm welcome to Ram Sareen, the founder and CEO of Tukatech since 1995. He is widely considered one of the top apparel production specialists in the world and has been named one of the top 20 most influential in the California garment industry on two separate occasions, resulting in an invitation to the White House. In 2018, Ram was honored by the Los Angeles Business Journal with the Fashion Award for Technology Innovation. And in 2019, he was an honoree for the Journal's Chief Technology Officers Award. A very warm welcome to the highly accomplished Mr. Ram Sareen. Thank you. Thank you, Reshma. So for those who do not quite understand the intersection between fashion and technology, can you explain a bit about how that works at Tukatech? It's not very different from the showbiz that you are in. If you look at where we have reached, um, in fashion, so many couture, so many companies, so many good designers did a lot of handwork no different than in the old days, we made the movies like that. Today we have post-production, digital um, rendering of the movies. Um, if you look at movies, um, some of them 60, 70% is just computer graphics. So it takes away, one, a lot of pain, cost, and it actually brings much better perspective at a lower time, lower cost, um, to make an amazing presentation. So technology plays a major role, whether I'm making the pattern by hand and cutting, or I make it by computers. The only difference is the computers remember what were the shapes. Remember in fashion, <clears throat> you're trying to build a product which has to fit a three-dimensional body but you're starting with flat, whether it's paper or fabrics. Now, how to put it all together, it is a science. It really is a technology. And if you go further, all these bodies are different shapes, different measurements, different sizes. So that's why we have different size ranges. So we don't make individual garments. We just make one garment, of we call the sample size, and then we apply the size of grading to a small, to extra small, to medium, to large, and so on. And Tukatech was the first to develop technologies for 3D fitting methods. What made you come up with this trend-setting innovation, and how does it work? I've been now 50 years in the garment industry, but I really got into this one by fluke. I am a mechanical engineer, and I've always benchmarked what automotive industry does. Sometimes you look at the problem head on and say, all right, um, is there an easier way to solve this problem? Um, in automotives, you have what we call car crash testing. You need to verify and make sure the car is safe. So you have certain amount of sensors and so on, seat belts and see the impact when it crashes. In apparel, it is exactly, exactly the same. I have to develop a garment, make the whole garment, put it on a person to find out if the garment is fitting properly. There are so many actions that we take. In the apparel, when I do this, is it fine and fitting? When I raise my arms, does it go out? All these things, the only way we're gonna do it is make a product, put it on a person, have the person go through these activities and then go back and make a correction to come back again. That's a long process and it's very expensive. So we wanted to digitalize that. In order to do that, we had to get the body of the person who's going to be doing it in exactly the same shape. So we scan the body, and we create the model, the fit model, and then we make the garment by creating these paper patterns into digital cloth and to sew it all together. You know what? Um, I very strongly believe in computers and I very strongly believe that if a man can do it, man can teach the computers to do it. And we're the first one in the world to make a totally automatic pattern making system. 
I took the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, gave them the measurements, they put these measurements, press the button, and the jeans were made. It's totally blown away. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you're definitely a visionary, and you created cutting edge innovation such as Tuka CAD, and which is this is a pattern making software, if I'm correct. Smart Mark, which reduces material waste, which is great. Tuka Cloud, a space where creatives can connect and collaborate, among many others. What need did you see for these kinds of innovation in the fashion industry, and how does it still need to evolve? First of all, compliments. You've been doing a lot of research on what we do. 25 years ago, um, my objective was to take these manual paper pattern makers and put them on the computer. Because I saw the computers are here for us in our lifestyle. But the challenge is when you take a 50 year or a 60 year old person who has never touched a computer, who is an artisan, who can do things with their hands and you tell them, you're going to interface with computer, first fear comes in. But that was a challenge. So I was the first one to bring digital pattern making in so many countries by holding hands and making it simple, easy. Creating technology is not a challenge. Knowing what to create, what the challenge is, writing a solution for that, that requires first the understanding of the problem. Uh, um, you asked me about the smart mark. It's mathematics, it's algorithms. There are certain shapes of pieces and these pieces have to interact with each other to find a best way to consume fabric or minimum amount of waste. Recently, people have been more aware of the sustainability problems associated with fast fashion industry, especially in the way that it contributes to pollution and wastage. However, Tukatech can potentially change this with the use of a clothing software. Can you talk to us a little bit about this and more about this phenomena and where do you see it going from here? Well, um, sustainability is very dear to me. I think we've done a lot of damage Clothing industry is one of the largest polluters in the world, whether it is making the yarn or the fabric or making the denim and putting all the washes, it doesn't matter. We do a lot of nonsense in this industry. We don't have to. In the name of progress or fast fashion or quick deliveries and so on, we shortcut and then we send out to other countries thinking, okay, if I'm not allowed to do it in the US, maybe I can do it in another country. It is still the same planet. 85% of all samples made go in the garbage. Landfills. Last year, 2019, we produced more than 120 billion garments for 7 billion people on the planet. The worst part is some of these deliveries and products were so bad they didn't even make it to the stores. More than 25 billion garments were sent to landfills. COVID has created an opportunity for people to rethink. I, as a person, want to buy what I need and I can wait for a day, two, five or whatever, but I want to have my closet where every garment of mine is my favorite rather than go check your own closets. You'll find less than 10% of all the garments you have are your favorites. The consumer today is young people like you who are very conscious about who made my garments. How was it made? What is the content of that? And I think the new generation, I have a lot of hope from younger people I think they are the one who are taking this step to save the planet. And another endeavor you've taken on is Tuka Talks, a web show that, and a podcast where fashion industry experts share their experience and knowledge. What response have you gotten from this and what made you want to begin this? Well, interesting. Um, I do a lot of consulting work and um, what is consulting? It's sharing knowledge, um, see something, show them how to do it right. 
in charge for that. Um, and I was charging a lot of money for that. At my age, it doesn't matter if any more money comes into my bank account or not, but it does matter if their knowledge gets passed on. And I tell all the young people that you can't live long enough to make your own mistakes. So if that is the case, then you might as well learn from others' mistakes. Knowledge comes from making mistakes, really. So I collected a, a, an amazing set of people who are really experts, knowledgeable in their own fields, whether it's retail or design or whatever the area may be. And we started a one hour session of taking one subject, a conversation between the two experts and take whatever the challenges at that time are. Uh, it's been a, quite a hit, okay. We get a lot of compliments on that and kind of encourages us to go and share. And one more brief thing I do want to talk about is your philanthropy and the relief initiative you started at the beginning of this pandemic to help the fashion industry pivot to producing PPP products, which was absolutely essential. Tukatek contributed over $2 million in professional cloud-based CAD products to fashion businesses during this COVID crisis. Can you talk to our viewers about what this is and how you assisted the fashion industry through this contribution? Well, I was in Italy when things were just going up in the numbers. When you have shutdowns, People don't realize there are a lot of other things which are what we call the necessary services or emergency services. And some of these people who are the first responders, they needed supplies. Those supplies may be coming from other places. So a lot of these garmentos, manufacturers, they kind of volunteered all over the world. So we needed to make sure that people who have the abilities to manufacture products for the first responders, for the hospitals, all the PPE should be able to do it. But these are specialized products. I am blessed to have experts working in Tukatech who work in many industries and, and guide many industries. So I took a task force from our own company people. I said, let's design, let's develop. We have the technologies and we created what we call the relief.com where people can go in and say, I need help in getting these patterns or getting these products developed. I can cut and sew, can you help us? Then their people who are working on the uh, factory are also relying on people who are not allowed to go to work. So for them to be able to connect with the softwares and technologies from their homes, so we had kind of a task force sitting, working almost 20 hour days with over 360 factories around the world. We teach them how to make the hazmat suits, how to make the caps and all kinds of different products. And um, yeah, we produced um, something like 27 million garments a month for the first two months through all these factories. That's incredible. And please tell our viewers how that they can <laughs> a part of the Tukatek family? I, I, I have grandchildren and I see it from their watching shows or um, their dressing up. All of us, whether we are young or adults, we all have desires of dressing up looking something different or unique. And then all of us have a little, what I call the designer streak in us. It's, it's no different than everybody wants to become a movie star. Some of them do. It's no different with people in the fashion business. These are the two parallel businesses, if you think about it. I wanted to simplify. I wanted to use technology. So I created engines with people who can actually go out and get a 3D garment for $5, get a pattern for that for $5 if they want to sell it at home. So I, I'll share something with you that how I created certain products where I can take a person who's got 
a desire to become a designer, but doesn't have the capital to invest either to buy a pattern maker or a sample sewer or have a factory to do some preparation to show that physical line of their products, whether it's t-shirts or it's wedding gowns, it doesn't make a difference. So we took those intelligent work, simplified that by creating templates, which already fit perfectly on certain people, their measurements and so on. Go in, do your creative work. And from the same silhouette, 50 people working on that silhouette are creating 500 different iterations. That is what I call igniting the lights up there, their creativity. This is where I call the visualizer. I don't have to make the entire product to see how that's gonna look. I can see it in real scale in 3D. And if I like it, then I make it. So we call that reversing the thinking process, the workflow, okay. So anybody who is watching this and they wanna go um, with Showbiz India, we call, uh, I think the, the, the code they created was uh, SHBZ, S Showbiz. If they go to my website and they wanna get that software to try it for a month, they can go with the code S-H-B-Z or Z in Canada. Uh, for everything that is available on the software applications, although it's very intuitive, um, you can see a small video how to get started. But if you really want to become an expert and you want to learn, you can actually go in and get the course online and become an expert if you feel this is what you want to be in life. And you were talking about how your 10-year-old granddaughter is going to be using the software. So it's that simple. It is. She is my guinea pig. I am actually testing every software myself on my computer. My theory is if I can run it, everybody can run it, okay? Because I'm not from the Google generation. I have to still... Type with two fingers, okay. Uh, what a visionary. Thank you so much for being on Showbiz India and we wish you continued success. It's always a pleasure with you.